All right, so by this point, you're probably a master of the nested if statements, uh, which is fantastic. The thing is, those statements were still based on pretty simple if this, then that statements. Um, what if we need to create a logical test that's based on a number of different fields or variables, as opposed to just temperature, for instance? Um, one great example of this is if we wanted to create a field called precipitation type. Um, and precipitation type can take a few different values. Let's say we want to categorize it as snow, rain, or none. Um, if you just think about it for a minute, there's no way to define snow, rain, or none based on just a single field because it's a function of two things, the temperature and the amount of precipitation. So if nothing's falling out of the sky, precipitation type will always be none. If precipitation is greater than zero, meaning something is coming out of the sky, we need to know if the temperature is above or below freezing to understand whether that is rain coming down or snow coming down. So that's where the and and or statements come into play. It's when you need to include multiple logical tests that are based on a number of different criteria or variables. So just continuing on with the precipitation type uh, example, you'll see that the syntax is a little bit funky. Uh, it can be a little tricky to get used to. Uh, from a readability standpoint, it might seem to make more sense to say if condition one and condition two, then in this case, Excel kind of flips it and it always starts with if and or if or or if not. Um, and then lists your criteria within parentheses. So reading through this example here, um, this and statement, basically what we're saying is logical test one is if these two things are true, so if and D2 equals yes, which that's our freezing column, which tells me that the temperature is freezing, it's below 32 degrees, and C2 is greater than zero, so precipitation is greater than zero, then precipitation type equals snow. Now if you remember the nested if syntax, instead of the value of false, we move right on into our second logical test, which is another if and statement. In this case we're saying if and D2 equals no, so it's not freezing, temperatures above 32 degrees, and also precipitation's greater than zero, then precipitation type equals rain. Then you're always going to wrap it up at the end, with your catch-all value if false value. Um, in this case, it's just going to be none. Um, so in order for this test to be true, both of these conditions need to uh, be true because it's an and statement. Um, and then if none of these are true, it's going to return the final value, which is none. Um, and now what if we wanted to create an additional field called conditions that are either equal to wet or dry um, and the conditions are just based on precipitation. So if precipitation is none, we know that the conditions are going to be dry no matter what. If the precipitation type is rain, conditions are wet. But if the precipitation type is snow, the conditions will also be wet. So we could say if precipitation type is rain, then wet. If precipitation type is snow, then wet otherwise dry and do it like a traditional nested if or we can get a little bit more elegant and introduce an or statement to do the same thing so in this or statement we're saying if or and then listing our two conditions basically this is saying if either one of these is true then we're going to return the value of true which is wet so if the precipitation type equals rain or it equals snow then conditions are wet and then again your catch-all value of false is going to be dry. So it will return those two values. Um, quick tip here, um, when you're writing nested functions, especially if you have a number of different uh, logical tests all stacked together, you can just copy and paste pieces of your formula to save yourself some time. So rather than rewriting if and and if or statements from scratch, um, just copy and paste and build your formulas that way. So let's bump over to Excel and actually uh, walk through these examples hands-on. 
So again, I'm going to use the exact same conditions that I just laid out. So precipitation type is going to be the AND statement that's based on freezing and precipitation. So columns I and H. I'm going to start with equals if parenthesis AND parenthesis and then list my two logicals that must both be true. So freezing equals, I'll start with yes, and precipitation is greater than zero. Close the parenthesis because that's my full and statement, and then comma to my value of true. So if both of these are true, what's the deal? It's freezing, there's stuff falling from the sky, so the precipitation type is snow. Um, and now I'm going to start with my second one. Again, I could go up here into the formula bar and copy this chunk and paste it. Um, I'm going to type this one out just to kind of walk you through it one more time. And then later in the sections, we're going to start to do some shortcuts like that. Um, so value of false. Remember, I have one more condition to test before I do my catch all value. So I'm going to do another if and statement. In this case, I2, the freezing field, uh, is going to be equal to no, so temperatures above 32, and precipitation is greater than zero. Close that out, comma over to value of true for this test, and that's going to be called rain. Then my last comma gets me to my final value if false. So it's if none of these tests are true, what do I want to return? And I just want none here. And then again, need to close it out with two parentheses. Um, I can tell that I'm done because I got the bold black parenthesis closing out my entire formula. Hit enter. You know, just like before, I use relative references, so I can just double click and apply this down, and it will update automatically. And then, you know, one way to check my values, I can just look at the filter and see, okay, all three of my potential values have populated none, rain, and snow. Um, I'm also getting an error value because, as we talked about, um, there are some blank and missing values, which we'll uh, address momentarily. Now let's quickly do the conditions field. This is the OR statement. And again, the conditions that must be true are that either the precipitation type is snow or the precipitation type is rain, in which case I'm going to call conditions wet, otherwise dry. So equals if OR two conditions are K2 equals snow, remember in quotes because I'm dealing with a text string, comma to my second criteria, which is K2 equals rain. Close out my OR statement, comma over. If either of these are true, what value do I want to return? That value is wet. And then again, if none of those are true, my value of false is going to be dry put it in quotes, close it off, hit enter, and apply that down just like I did in the last example. And as you can see, I'm getting both dry and wet values. If I just do a quick spot check, anytime column K is none, I'm seeing a dry value. And then snow equals wet, rain equals wet, everything looks good. So there you go. That's uh, a quick example of how to use AND and OR statements to develop uh, more complicated and dynamic logical tests.